All right, guys. Uh, before we jump into the game, what I thought I would do is um, I'm in the process of getting the uh, GD-ROM into the Naomi, and as mentioned, uh, I need to do a EEPROM swap. So I'm going to kind of show you what I'm going to need to do here for those people that may not know. Um, basically, this is quite dark, so I'll try to illuminate this as best I can. But this is the uh, Naomi 2 motherboard that's come out of the cab here, and um, this thing here. This piece here is the DIM board, which um, you put your security chip in here, and this basically is the communication. This is the uh, the SCSI cable between the GD-ROM and uh, and the DIM board. And the DIM board is what uh, controls uh, the game. Well, basically, the GD-ROM feeds all the data through the SCSI cable into the DIM board, which has uh, onboard memory that stores the game and um, and plays the game. Basically, it's like a uh, uh, just a regular um, Naomi cartridge but with RAM chips in it which stores the game once the game's loaded from the GD-ROM it's the GD-ROM's no longer uh, used at all so everything is stored on the DIM board once you turn off the the cab obviously you have to go through that process again so in any case um, DIM board lives here and uh, behind this chip here let's try to get in there this one right here is the EEPROM chip and uh, currently the chip I have in there is the USA BIOS chip there's three types, there's the USA, there's an export version and there's a Japanese version now um, this is the uh, the one I'm going to be re replacing it with is the uh, Japanese version here which is the latest which is the C BIOS, it's the 605C which is the last Japanese Naomi 2 BIOS you could get. Um, so this supports um, pretty much anything which is good. But um, the complication is um, you always have to kind of swap BIOSes in and out. It's, if, especially if you're kind of switching between Japanese only games and, and USA games. It's, it gets quite tedious. So we're gonna we're gonna do this right now. We're gonna swap out the BIOS and um, show you how that's done. But Basically, what you want to do here is I'm going to move this around. See if we can make this work. And uh, let's try to zoom in here a little bit if we can. All right, so we want to take out this chip here. The BIOS chip, so I'm going to do that here. And uh, you just want to take a screwdriver and just be really, really gentle with pushing out the pins. I mean, extremely gentle. You don't want to force it, you don't want to bend any pins. You just want to just give it a little push. And um, once you do that, the chip just pops right out there, you see. There it is, right there. So now, what we want to do is just get our replacement. And just swap it in. And just take note of, uh, if you haven't changed an IC before, take note of the groove side here, which needs to align with the groove side on the motherboard or on the socket which is which is here so this is the way I'm going to put the uh, the chip in I, rec I don't recommend you do it any other way um, it'll probably cause some damage so just make sure you have the socket in the right way or the chip in the right way in the socket I mean and it should just fit in Causing me a bit of grief. Just wonder if the pins are okay here. Yeah, the pins are a little bit bent. I'll just fix those up and try that again. I'm gonna put this torch down. There we go. It's locked in now, as you can see. Let's get this out here. Just 
turn the zoom back. Alright, so this is our new BIOS chip. It's in there. So we've got the Japanese BIOS in there now, so we are good to rock and roll. Okay. While we're here, let's let's just swap the whole thing in. I'll show you how, how all that works. So once again, I'm just going to put this camera here on the stand, and um, we're going to take this game here. And the first thing to do um, is to uh, get your dim board here and uh, get the game that you want, and swap out the security chip. So you take your security chip here from the game, and there's only one way this can go in. So that's uh, that's locked in there now. So your dim board's all good to go. So now we can uh, put the dim board back in the cab. place now you can see there's uh, screw holes here for the uh, dim board so this is not meant to be taken in and out all the time I never bother with the screws I just leave the screws off um, I don't have one game in there long enough to uh, actually deal with that so um, yeah so uh, I just uh, leave them off but sometimes if you if your board isn't pushed in enough you'll have some kind of errors um, but for the most part it should work fine all right so now the next thing is we've got our GD rom here so let's get the game in and then this thing needs to close properly Could just should just slot into place here like that just locks in and there's actually a screw hole here right there um, where you, you put a screw in but uh, I don't have the screw for that as long as it's locked into place there it's fine but if it's kind of loose um, the Naomi system will actually give you an error and tell you to um, you know to close the lid properly which is quite nice okay so the next thing to do now is uh, connect the GD-ROM power and the uh, SCSI cable back. So the power is back here in the cab, so I'm just going to connect that up here to the GD-ROM power. And the SCSI cable should just connect up. Again, all we did here was just take the uh, power from the power supply and hook it up, and the uh, G uh, GDROM cable or the SCSI cable, and uh, we're pretty much good good to go now. All we just need to do is just move this up here somewhere and just get the uh, Capcom board in the cab. Just make some space, basically, and uh, that should all fit nicely now. So. There you go, there's the uh, the end result. We've done a game swap and, a, and an EEPROM swap. And uh, here's the US EEPROM. Certainly you want to put that somewhere. You don't want to lose that because eventually we'll, we'll want to go back to that. I'm sure I'm going to want to play some USA game again and uh, get back onto that. So, um, so yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's all I want to show. That's shows you how to do a successful EEPROM and GD ROM swap. It wasn't pretty. Uh, hopefully, you got something out of that. And uh, yeah, we'll get onto the gameplay next.